A wide variety of topics today on the Brumance because we just want to chat with you. My name is Rob Hunter, joined by Mike Russell right here on 550 KFYI and the Brumance podcast, Olympics, mental health, hunting. We're going to cover a ton today yes. over a beer. This is where great conversations tend to happen. Mike Russell, what are we drinking today? How about the Alesmith IPA? This is a West Coast uh, style. Indian pale ale, India dog nab it. I'm back to my old ways. <laughs> India pale ale, and and here's the deal. I saw this. I saw this at Total Wine, and it said 95 points on Beer Advocate. And so I was like, okay, that's good. I'm gonna grab it. And then I thought, uh, okay, why did my expectations just fall through the floor? And it seems we, it's not a bash on Beer Advocate at all. I, I Beer Advocate's fine. It's a wonderful organization, but I, I just now I'm like 95 is almost perfect. So there's a lot yes. of people saying that this thing is damn near perfect. And so I immediately, I don't know if it's self-defense, self-preservation, whatever it is, I just set my expectations uh, low at that point. So if you, we, we have what we call the Brewman's Barometer. It's our rating system, but it's just a recommendation system for you because everybody has different tastes. So we do a one to 10 scale. So this would be the equivalent of a nine and a half. I think which yeah. we've only given three, maybe four or five beers have gotten that high, like Mother Road's Tower Station is one of our favorites. Helton's Northeast IPA, Dragoon Brewing's IPA. Those are the three that come to mind that would be up in that nine, nine and a half scale, at least on an IPA. So you're going to try to tell me that this Alesmith Brewing Company IPA is going to compete with those? We will see. Yeah, and Pliny too. I mean, this is up there yeah. with Pliny apparently. So yeah, that's why I said I'm going to set the expectations low. It's like I had Pliny. It's when I had Pliny for the first time years and years and years and years ago. And it was on a pitcher. It was, off, it was on tap. It's fantastic. And I thought this was the greatest beer I've ever had in my life. And then years went by of me hyping this beer. So it was so good. It was the best thing I ever had. And this, uh, the clouds part in the sun. Oh, it was so <laughs> wonderful. And everything was great. And, uh, and then my, my father-in-law got me a bottle years later and handed it to me. And I got nervous. I'm like, how could it possibly match the expectations that I've built for it over all these years? And then... Boom. It did. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> good job, so, Russian River. But that point. is it. It's like expectations, right? And it's it's you 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 have all right. This someone tells you, man, this movie was phenomenal. You gotta go see this movie. And you go see it, and you think the movie's supposed to be phenomenal. So let's say Mike says phenomenal. I don't know what necessarily Mike's definition of a phenomenal movie is. It might yeah. be different from what I think is a phenomenal movie. So you almost have to separate that. Right. And go, all right, I'm going to approach this with an open mind and see if I can understand why Mike would think it was a phenomenal movie rather than putting. Oh, OK. Mike's putting a lot of pressure on me to think that this movie's phenomenal. And, you know, me, Mike, I'm so counterculture sometimes where if someone tells me the movie's phenomenal, I'm going to be like, eh, it's OK. <laughs> yeah, because people like it. But I, I do like uh, Rob and I had an acquaintance we used to work with that did uh, movie reviews. And I do appreciate one of his aspects when people say, oh, my gosh, this is the best movie I've seen. And he goes, OK, how many movies have you seen? <laughs> Which is a good point, because you think about people in craft beer, they're like, oh, Blue Moon, that is such the best craft beer on the market. And you're like, OK, cool. Great. Love your palate. It's fantastic. How many craft beers have you had? Like, no, I just drink Coors Light and this is the first one I've had. OK, I, I, I now I know where you're coming from and I know where that baseline is. Yeah. Yeah, as opposed to if you go to movies twice a week and you see every movie that comes out, you're going to have a different expectation about movies. Yeah. Because, and, and that's my challenge as I get older, because now I know the movie playbook. I know how the whole thing works. There's this book called Save the Cat, which actually explains current script writing. So you have all these moments. And then there's always the, what they call the lost, uh, what do they call it? I think it's the lose it all moment. That's the moment when everything's going great. And then the hero comes crashing down to reality and they're like, oh, they got to climb themselves out of it. So now that I've read this book, I watch movies and I'm like, oh, OK, there's the lose it all moment. And then it's going to be the rebuild and go for that happy ending. So I, I think that I, I that's remember, a challenge. I remember that from all of my favorite movies, the Ernest goes to movies and the uh, <laughs> Pee Wee Herman movies. So, yeah, I remember I, they just hero comes crashing down. I totally get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Poor <laughs> well, Ernest. Yeah, if those are the only movies you've seen. Like, these are fantastic. Absolutely. Are the best movies. Like, I saw, I watched uh, Jungle Cruise, which has just been released, and I watched Jungle Cruise with the family this weekend, and it was not a good movie. <laughs> but I've watched it twice. Oh, really? 
because because I like the I like the Rock's character in it. Fantastic acting, and I'm being serious. Not like it's no thespian kind of deal. It's just he's a Jungle Cruise driver. And if you've been to Disneyland as many times as I have, being from Southern California, having the annual passes, going all the time, and I wanted to be one of those, he's got all the jokes. And he delivers them so well. But it's still a crappy movie. But it's still his part and is Emily Blunt. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they, hit, they hit the mute button on both of them, by the way. Rock is a pretty man. Rock is a, a, a good-looking dude. They hit the mute button on him. They hit, hit the mute button on her, too. And they still both look good. Yeah, I think it's impossible for both of those people to not look good. They wake up like, hello, I look amazing. Thank you very yeah. much. But they also take, woo, rookie mistake. Easy, I my microphone. I got excited yeah. over here. But they obviously take very good care of themselves, you know, like all the time. Like they don't eat pizza once a week. They might eat pizza once or twice a year. <laughs> yeah. And that's not a life I want to live. I can choose dad bod and radio face uh, and eat pizza and tacos. <laughs> All the time. Craft beer. Ale yeah, Smith's okay, IPA, absolutely. 95 points. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Speaking of Disney, did you see this just came out today as we're recording this? They have the Disney hotel that they're turning into the Star Wars experience. Yeah. It's it's pricey. They finally released the prices. I'm going to pull these up for you. Okay. Uh, because I have to just scroll through this article real because quick. Because I'm a Star Wars it. nerd. Rob knows yes. exactly that he's geeking me out right now. And I think he's going to think that he's breaking my heart, but I have credit cards. But yes, you do. So, yeah. This is the this is kind of this is a really cool idea that Disney's doing. So you go check in this hotel and you become part of the Star Wars world. Like you do not leave this hotel except to go to Disney rides while you're there. You take a space cruiser to Star Wars land or whatever. So this is an all-inclusive package that includes yep. food, but for us the bad news is Mike, alcoholic beverages are not included. That's okay. For two people, uh-huh. two nights, yep, $4809. Take my money. For a studio. Take it. If you add one kid, uh huh, five two nine nine, so fifty three hundred dollars. Take my money. And then up to six thousand dollars if there's a kid and a third adult in the room. Take my money. Take. My and I'm not money. kidding. You should see how much I mean. We're we're going to get into a hunt. We're going to go on in October. Wait till you see how much money I spent on that. And so <laughs> I can't. But but here's the deal, though. I mean, we're talking about photography, videos. These every moment will be captured. Every moment's going to live forever. And it's worth it to me. So as a parent who my daughter's about turned 16, I know I got a couple years left with her and then she gone. So if I can blow some coin now, making sure that I have that experience, that type of experience with her, then I, it's it's 100% worth it to me. And I'm not acting like a one percenter. I would have to budget, say, oh, yeah. and, and probably put some on plastic too. But I it, to me, it would be okay. Like, like I always say, it actually came from another movie. It came from the Willy Wonka movie. He said, you, he said, you're going to give this ticket away for something as common as money. <laughs> He's like, they print more money every day. There's only five of these mm-hmm. and they print more money every day. There's only one of my daughter and she's only exactly. going to be around for this amount of time. So I think it's worth it. I'm in, I, I'm all in. 100%. And here, here's why I would agree. So, 5,000 bucks, let's call it that, because, you know, obviously we don't have any kids. So it'll be a little bit more expensive for Mike. But if Lady Brumance and I decide to do this, you compare what we've spent $5,000 on, right? So we went to Japan. We used a ton of credit card points. I think we went to Japan for less than that. Nice. And I'm not making this a negative comment because it's about the experience. This is something that you will do one time, maybe, mm-hmm. if you're a normal person and you budget like Mike will do. But you will remember it forever and you will talk about it forever. That is why I think it is absolutely worth doing because especially if you grew up like Mike and I did, you're, you're in your forties, maybe you're, you're grew up on all the star Wars movies. Here's your chance to actually live. What is probably the greatest sci-fi adventure Mm -hmm. that we will ever know. That is pretty damn cool. And why do you think you, you and uh, lady brewman's aren't coming with me? Oh, okay. Perfect. That's Let's yeah, that's goofy it. to get that. That would be even better. Like if you have a big group of people and we get to take oh. your daughter and oh my God. Seriously. And just mm-hmm. so we're well, well aware, I will turn to the dark side. If it's an option, I'm going to. <laughs> if I have the force, I'm turning to the dark side. Just let me know. <laughs> that's where we that's where we are with the whole thing. So it'll be Mike and me in a, a lightsaber duel at the end of the stay. We're like, okay, fine. Good side, light side, dark side, let's go. Greatest brewman's video ever, and you would be, you would be you would have a light beer in your hand, and I would have a dark beer in my hand, and that's why we would one hand light, you know, wizard 
light swords <laughs> banging at each other. But then I would just go like this. I would look at you with my light beer, and I'm like, if you strike me down, I will become yeah. more powerful than you could ever imagine. And I will, I seriously will Tanya Harding your ass right there. Just take you out. No problems with that. So it sounds like we're signing up to do this. So it's going yes. to be amazing. Maybe you will too. It's going to be fantastic. So what we're going to do here in just a second on the Brewmance podcast. If you listen to the podcast, you get to skip the commercials. But we're going to talk about the Olympics. Did you watch any of the Olympics? That's next on the Brewmance on the radio, 550 KFYI. These just might be beers of Olympic proportions, but Ooh. will they stay in the competition? Hmm, they might sit a few plays out. Welcome to Brewmance on the radio. I'm Mike Crossley's Rob Hunter. Each and every week, we gather around a beer for some great conversations. This week, we're just hanging alone. Usually, we like to have, you know, some celebrity, some name types with us. But today, we're just having a good conversation. I want to get into the Olympics. But, Rob, first, what are we drinking, pal? Ale Smith's. West Coast IPA. Mike picked this up because he saw it in the store, and Beer Advocate gave it a 95 out of 100. So we're going to put it to the Brewman's test to see if we rate it that high. That would be a 9.5 on the Brewman's barometer. We'll see towards the end of the show here. That's a gold medal, if you will. <clears throat> uh, Good one. Yeah, a wonderful segue, right? That's why so, he's a broadcasting professional. <laughs> I used to be glued <laughs> to the TV for two weeks. Every time the Olympics was on, winter or summer, didn't care. Didn't care. I loved watching the Olympics. It was fantastic. This year, eh, eh. I think a lot of it was that it's it said 2020 on everything. And it's in half the world is trying to forget 2020. <laughs> and we and now it says now it's now in, in 2021, it was just weird. And then there was no fans. So there was no like, you know, there's no energy, really. It was just it was almost like watching pro, uh, pro athletes practice. Mm. And I was like, eh, eh. but still, um, I found a new sport that I dig watching. And that is the uh, the, the kayaking, the slalom where they're oh, really? in, they're in their sit in kayak and they're like wrapped around their waist. I've never seen more athleticism in Olympic sport. Mm. The decathlon. Nope. Not not as athletic as what these guys pull off. It's pure strength. It's crazy. So I did find something I did like. I, I did pick a nugget out of it. Yeah. I think I watched a total of 30 minutes of Olympics. I don't even really know why. It has nothing to do with politics, wokeness, yeah. protest, COVID. I don't even know. I just, my, the time I allot to sports has just decreased. So the last Olympics was 2016. I watched a pretty significant portion of the 2016 Olympics in Rio. I think it was Rio, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Rio. Okay, sure. But I think the timeline was also better too because it was live, right? I think it was kind of East Coast time or I think Rio is or whatever. So you could watch it at a regular time. Here it's all delayed. So you knew the results ahead of time if you subscribe to any news feeds. So right. I knew who won and I was just like, I'm just not going to bother to watch it. I just wasn't compelled to. And I just... I don't have a good reason why. I just don't think I wanted to spend that much time sitting on my couch watching four hours of Olympic coverage because I just don't have that much time typically to do. Well, for me, the sports I watch won't make TV. And then and that is because of wokeness, but we're not getting political here. It's just I, I want to watch the shooting. I want to watch the mm. um, I want to watch the archery. I want to watch that kind of stuff. And it just doesn't make TV. It's just it's just it. it I don't know if the draw's not there, if they're just like, I'm not going to show shooting sports, whatever it is, but we cleaned house in the shooting sports. So good job, USA. Just a little note to the rest of the world. That's all I'm saying. Uh, when it comes to shooting, the U.S., uh, we, we actually know how to do it over here. And that's why you wonder, why do you guys have guns? Olympics. If we just said that, everyone would back off. Look, we're all training to be Olympic athletes, sharpshooters. It's a necessary skill. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what we're doing. It's no yeah. deal. We're all but trying to be Olympians. Exactly. But NBC owns a bunch of properties. Do they own any outdoor network? Because Mike is our resident outdoor guy. So you can check out his show, The Go Show. It airs for you on KGME, Fox Sports 910 on Saturday mornings, 6 to, six to, eight. Six to 8. And then 3 to 5 p.m. on Sundays on 550 KFY. You can stream either of those live on your iHeartRadio app, too. All you got to do is either type in Fox Sports 910 or KFYI at the appropriate time. So, do they have any outdoor channels that NBC owns that they could put those sports? Because I'd imagine they would do fantastic for outdoor people who like to shoot, 
that gravitate towards those networks. NBC Sports used to have a lot of outdoor programming, a lot of it. Then they signed this multi-bazillion dollar contract uh, with the Premier League, and all of that went bye-bye. It became the soccer channel. Mm-hmm. So soccer. I, and that's fine. I, you know, I got my headlines and I know uh, Kaylee Browning. I've got to hunt with her. Kaylee Browning uh, won a silver medal uh, in skeet shooting. So that was cool. I mean, that, yeah. was, that was pretty neat, but I didn't get to see it. And then this whole thing came in with our new Michael Jordan, Simone Biles, the, the greatest gymnast ever. I mean, what she pulls off is just insane. And she just uh, had a couple bobbles at the beginning and went, eh, I'm gone. I'm out. And she said it was for mental health reasons. And then the IOC and the U.S. Olympic Committee lied and said, no, 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 something physical, something physical. Then she did an interview going, no, nothing physical. I'm totally fine, 100%. Yeah, better than I've ever been. Uh, but I'm just taking some time off from me. And that kind of left me head scratching, not judging her really, just going, is this really happening? This is, I thought this is kind of what y'all were supposed to do at the premier athletic level is be able to push through that any kind of emotion that you're having and just deliver because I don't know any, know any other way you can r rise to that level. That's the huge key. And that's why Simone Biles was criticized by so many people, not in the arena, if you will. I took the opposite approach. I'm like, look, she made her decision. It's up to her. Yeah. Is it a decision I would have made? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Cause we later found out that her aunt died and that had impacted her. At least that's what the, the third reason was at yeah. first it was the twisties. Because, right. you know, when you get twisted and you get stuck and you might land on your face and break your neck, you obviously right. don't want to do I understand that. But then Mike's you pointing out that, oh, no, it's physical. But it turned out that it was her aunt passing away that, you know, really impacted her. So I don't know what to make of all of that. It's I, I think that helped, though, as a fan of the Olympics, if you were and you wanted to watch her, that was, OK, another reason to not pay attention to the Olympics. But all three of our programs, we like to talk like grown-ups. We like to talk like adults. And I, I just see in the background, uh, excuse me, Ms. Miles, your, uh, all of your endorsers have called. Uh, all, ah. of your, all of the people that pay millions of dollars to you every single year for this moment, uh, they would like you to be on the balance beam or whatever she <laughs> ended up being on and got a silver medal. And they're like, okay, all right. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Mental health. Yay. Now we can talk about mental health because at least she got us what we needed and we needed her to win something so we can continue to give her millions. So there was a lot more at play than just, I don't feel well mentally and emotionally, which is okay. You can have those moments. I've had those moments. Rob's had those moments. It's okay. But it, there's more at play than just that. And it was, it was, they really made a strong effort to say, this is all a spotlight on mental health now. This is so amazing and so important. And they walked away from that quickly because they needed her to come back because there's money involved. There are people, there's livelihoods involved. That's actually a great point because as you were talking, what dawned on me is mental health has kind of become one of those ubiquitous terms that doesn't really mean much anymore. I'll use another example. The term racism. Are there real racists in the country and in this? Uh, absolutely. And we should really focus on people who legitimately believe, and I'm not saying this is a legitimate belief because it's a stupid belief, that their race is superior to other races. There are people that believe that in America right now. There are people who believe that in the world. Yeah. That's real racism. What we have now defined racism as includes, I don't like you. I disagree with you. I'm just going to call you a racist. So it's mm -hmm. diluting the actual term racist so that everyone's a racist. So therefore, no one's a racist. Same thing with mental health. It's become such a ubiquitous term without specific definitions because there are many different avenues of yeah. mental health. There's depression. There's anxiety. There's performance anxiety. I could go on and on and on. So it's the easy way out for NBC or for commentators to say mental health is in the spotlight. What's the spotlight? Is that it? Yeah. Are we done with this conversation now? Because we said the two key words, mental and health, and put them together. Because that that term pulls well. Yes. It stops people and goes, oh, okay, we're talking about mental health. Because who wants to be that guy? Pay mental health. Yeah. <laughs> Rub some dirt on your soul. You'll be okay. Suck it up. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> You'll be toughen up a little bit, you know? And, and there's got to be some of that. I mean, but I've learned that doing this, what we do seven days a week, I've learned the importance of weekends, the importance of vacations, the importance of taking time away. 
Mm-hmm. And whether because I mean, our Monday through Friday, when we're talking about politics and deep politics the entire time is like uh, it's taxing mentally, mm-hmm. emotionally, physically. If you're lo- I'm losing sleep sometimes. Yeah, you need a break. I get it. So if you want to call it a mental health break, that's cool. But my mental health break and Rob's mental health break can happen Wednesday at 4 p.m. Because no. that's when our music starts and we need to go on air. That's when we need to deliver. So that's, I, I just think that there's, I, I, like you said, Rob, you, the ubiquity of the whole thing just makes it, it just blurs what a giant spectrum it is. And it just, it needs to be focused on. There's a big spectrum. hundred percent agree because, but we have to get specific about specific instances so we can really address it because we have a tendency to pretend we care about things and we use the ubiquity of it to say, I care about mental health. Good for you. We yeah. all do mm-hmm. in a moment. This is one of those places we're going to find some some rest, some respite. The hunt Mike and I are going on in October. We'll tell you about next year on the Brewman's and the Radio. 550 KFYI. Two months away from a big hunt. A big hunt that we're going to do here at the Brewman's combined with the Go Show. Rob Hunter, Mike Russell here with you on 550 KFY and the Brewman's podcast. Thank you for hanging out with us. Whew. Before we get to the hunt. Okay. And before we get to my uncomfortable challenge with the hunt. What beer are we drinking this week on the Brewmats, Mike? Uh, first of all, let me correction before we get to that. Uh, six weeks, pal. Uh, not two six months. Six weeks. Don't talk about. Don't talk about two months. If you just you just what broke my heart saying two months. I'm that excited. <laughs> I'm counting down days. Uh, this is Ale Smith's IPA. It's their, it's their West Coast IPA, and uh, I just I it was given a 95 by Beer Advocates. So I'm excited to the end of the program to see if we're gonna uh, really make it live up to that kind of hype. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see because that would put it in one of the top beers on Brewmance Radio podcast history. L. Smith, how you doing? Mm-hmm. Let's see. Let's see what they got. So the first weekend of October, six weeks from now, as we record this, we are going up north, going up to Flagstaff, which is about for us about two hour drive from mm-hmm. the Phoenix area, and we are going to hunt. Now, Mike has taken me out hunting a couple of times, bird hunting. Mm-hmm. That's one thing. We'll talk about that more in a minute if necessary. Then we went on an elk hunt, but didn't see an elk. So I didn't actually see the process of harvesting the elk, mm-hmm. which is the literal term because you take an animal that essentially has no more purpose in the wild except to disrupt the wild, right? So you have these older elk that can't reproduce anymore that run around, mess around with all the young bucks who are trying to reproduce. They beat them up. And I found something else interesting about elk hunting. Hmm. I was listening to Joe Rogan podcast. Mike and I have talked about this. And Joe Rogan says, look, here's the reality. No matter what, that animal, the elk, is not going to die a peaceful death in the wild. It's going to slow down, get old, and get eaten by a bear or something. So it's the natural process anyways that human beings have inserted themselves in. But you think about it. Most of us on the planet eat meat. Most of us in America, 90% of America eats meat. Mm-hmm. It's the same process. It's just you're doing it yourself. Yeah. Unfortunately, we didn't see an elk, so we didn't get a chance to harvest it. Uh, one of our group did, but we just had to pick it up and put it in the back of the truck because it was already. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> so it's yeah. like this nice introduction to me to do it. So this hunt, Mike, is going to be what six weeks from now? What are we going to be doing? So now I am actually uh, I have a bison hunt. So that's Buffalo, which is going to trigger a lot of people. I understand that. Uh, but understand that it, because of the North American model of wildlife conservation and the United States sportsmen and women, uh, bison populations are good. They're, they're back. It's, it's good. As a matter of fact, uh, the Grand Canyon is getting crushed right now by bison. And the National Park Service, Arizona Game and Fish have to combine to actually cull that herd, to actually pull that population out. And that means hunting them. And so that's what we're, what's up? But now I, I could go 20 more years applying for a tag, but no, I found a spot that has, I'm going to go just, I'm, I'm going to go hunt a bison. So in this place, they also have uh, feral hogs, feral hogs in, in, I know in Texas is a big deal here in Arizona, not so much, but in Texas, in I think five years, feral hogs will outnumber cattle. Wow. In Texas. That's it's it's terrible. They're like rats. They they're everywhere. Farmers, ranchers will pay people just to come lay them down. They'll put them up in helicopters with ARs like just please. You have to take this population Now, game and fish is on. The National Wildlife Service is all about it, too. So I mean, everybody, the biggest conservationists are like, yeah, get rid of these. So I said, Rob, you've taken birds. 
And that was a big experience for you. That was, mm -hmm. a, that was a deep experience. And I loved that. I think one of my favorite pictures I have are you and I sitting on my tailgate talking about that, mm -hmm. talking about that moment, just moments after you did that. And then, and then I said, you know, this feral hog thing, what do you think about going up and hunting your own hog? And uh, Rob said, that's very uncomfortable. That's way out of his comfort zone. And he wants to push himself. That's why I want to do it. I'm not going to lie. I like bacon. I love pork chops. Mm -hmm. So I looked at it from the standpoint of there's that comfort zone of pretending that someone didn't kill that animal that I've eaten. Mm -hmm. It's that next step to actually do it. Because I've been on this journey in thinking about how human beings came onto this earth. So whatever it is that you believe, right? We evolved and it's been hundreds of thousands of years of human evolvement from inventing the fire to fail, figuring out you can, you can harvest an animal and sustain yourself because life sustains life. That's just one of the things about this planet. When you eat a plant, you're still taking life. If you mm -hmm. want to look at it to an extreme point. So I love the uncomfortableness of saying, I'm willing to eat this meat. Am I willing to take it myself and harvest it? And then not just take the animal out for lack of a better term, but then go cut it open and mm -hmm. get rid of all of the stuff you don't eat, leave those for the animals in the woods, mm -hmm. and then actually go cook and, and harvest this meat. Because I imagine this is going to be, so long as I can aim accurately, a transformational experience because you are doing farm to table on your own in a way yes and uh it, it's better meat it's better quality meat there's less processing it's better for the environment there's no uh water waste and things like that it's just it's better and a lot of people say that they're like you know you just go to the store and get meat okay when the store runs out of meat then i'll think about going and doing it <laughs> no. no what you've done is and i'm not insulting anyone just you're just trusting someone like rob mentioned you're, you're just you're just trusting someone else to do that for you and to take that animal ethically, and even if they didn't, you're just turning a blind eye to it. Like I don't care. I like my nuggets, mm -hmm. and that's and it's fine. But there's some of us that choose to try our best to get most of our animal proteins from from the sky, from the field, and from the streams. So that's just it's it's a different experience. It's a healthier experience, and you are attached to it. There's it's it, you don't want to be just some weird just killer. I don't hunt anything I don't eat. I don't I, I don't want to hunt a zebra because I'm not going to eat a zebra. Mm -hmm. I'd never I never thought I'd ever hunt a mountain lion in my life until um who's the guy from Guardians of the Galaxy? What's his name? And Chris Parks and Pratt. Chris Pratt, right? Until he was he, talking about a a harvest that he had a mountain lion. He said mountain lion is one of the best meats you're ever going to eat in your life. Same with the shark. I thought, no, I no, would never eat a shark. Shark's one of the best food you're ever going to eat in your life. So now I hunt and fish for those because I know I'm going to take every piece of that and put it to the use and the nourishment of my family, my friends, and myself. Which is exactly the way it was a thousand years ago. I mean, we've created such a convenient life for ourselves that if something happens, obviously I hope it doesn't, most people are not going to know what to do. Because we've never had to do it. And that's the point of getting out of the convenience. So I'm looking at this as such a mental challenge to take a step out and be grateful for all the convenience that we have. The fact that there's a supermarket two miles from my house that I get to drive to and buy food. There's a Costco five miles from my house. Where I got this beer is about 15 minutes from my house. Someone made this beer and put it in a can. I had zero to do with it. These things take hours and days to, to be able to create of sitting there science. I just get to crack open the can and drink it. Yep. So this is that whole step of I have to make this on my own and figure out why I'm uncomfortable and whether I can get over that uncomfortableness because this is the way human beings lived for hundreds of thousands of years. Mm -hmm. Am I man enough, woman enough, whatever? to be able to meet the challenge that in order to survive 2000 years ago, 5,000 years ago, this is what you had to do. That's right. And, um, and it's going to change your world to actually process that, cook that and put that on your family's table. It's going to change them. I know you have family dinner night once a week. If you do that and you bring a ham or you bring something like, uh, I don't care if it's uh, uh, pulled pork, whatever it is, you're like, that's I, this is from me. It'll mm -hmm. change your whole world.
It really will. And I'm not being like, oh, it's going to put some hair in your chest. And no, it just it, it's 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 emotional. It's, yes. it's it's a religious kind of thing. It feels great to pull that off. And I, I just think that uh, our, our friend Oliver from Mother Mother of Brewing is going to be coming. And he called me the other day and he was like, uh, hey, listen, man, I I just want to be a part of the experience. I don't think I want to shoot a hog. And like that. I said, cool. And he was almost surprised by that. I'm like, I'm going to egg you on and do yeah, something right. you don't want to do. He's like, do you think I could help Rob with some of his processing and then uh, maybe get some, <laughs> get some of the meat? I think, I think, I think we could probably pull that off. Depends yeah. how much beer you bring, Oliver. That's the real, the yeah, real right, question. Buddy. Yeah, <laughs> telling you, absolutely. But, but it, And that's the thing. And I encourage all the sportsmen and women out there because we want everyone to come along. And I did a video on the Go Show with Oliver looking at him going, this is not what you look and see at, from the cover of the book. This is a hunter. And mm -hmm. he's actually taking an elk, javelina. We we involve we invite everyone. And if you want to if you want to shoot, cool. If you don't, cool. Just come see that we're not a bunch of Yosemite Sam, you know, crazy killers out there. And we actually this is this is a religion to us. This is our sport. This is this feeds us, literally. Approach everything with an open mind. That is the best way to go it. Reserve your judgments until you've gone through it. And even then. Realize that people have different perspectives than you and different needs and different whatever than you and want to do different things than you. And there's nothing wrong with that. So six weeks from now, I'm very much looking forward to this challenge. Thanks, Mike, for setting it up. In a yeah, moment, man. we'll get to Ale Smith's IPA. Is it as good as Beer Advocate says? Stay right there. It's 550 KFYI. It might be a little more difficult for you to get into your favorite bar if you haven't gotten that uh, vaccine there. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Brewman's on the radio. I'm Mike Russell. He's Rob Hunter gathering around a beer for well-crafted conversation. Ale Smith today. What kind of Ale Smith we having, buddy? It's their West Coast style IPA beer advocate gave it 95 out of 100. So we saw that and had to put it to the Brewman's test because Here's the deal about what we are at the Brewmance. Not only do we welcome open-minded, non-judgmental conversations, we want to bring you together with us over a beer. We're going to give you our honest feedback on beers. Like, look, should you try it? Should you not try it? Based on our palates, that's what we tell you about. So in just a couple of minutes, we'll tell you if it rates up there as a 9.5 on the Brewmance barometer. Yeah, that's right. Now, it might be a little more difficult for you to get into your favorite bar coming up soon as we have uh, covid vaccination mandates sweeping across the country and there are some restaurants here at least one bar was the first to jump off and say yes we are not allowing anyone into our establishment they cannot prove that they have gotten the fauci ouchy so it is going to uh, i think uh start to roll i think that's the first domino that fell and i'll tell you this i'm anti-vaccine passports to in every piece of my soul but i love that they're doing it and I love that they can do it. And I love that they're putting it up to the free market and say, okay, I'm going to take Arizona's temperature right now and see if we're going to keep our business going doing this. Because about half of Arizonans total have been vaccinated. So we're right around 50, 52%. Yeah. Now, obviously that includes zero to 12 year olds, zero to 11 year olds who can't be vaccinated because the FDA has not authorized that. Yeah. So I think adults were 60 something percent. So we're up in that range. So the, the thing that I find very interesting about this decision, a couple of things. The science is changing about the vaccines. I saw a story today as we record this, which is the middle of August. The Pfizer vaccine is about 42% effective at preventing you from getting COVID. Right. So with that major change, right, we've gone from 95% chance you will not get COVID to 58% if you're exposed, you might. That's a big change. That's a massive change. So in paying attention to the science, I'm just not sure this is a great idea for a business. And I, you know me, Mike. Mike and I talk about this all the time. My number one belief in, in the world is about freedom. Freedom to be you. Freedom to not be oppressed in any way by your government. The fact that you're born means you're born to live free Obviously, there needs to be some rules to keep society in some order. But this, to me, is a very slippery slope of segregation, and it's based on a power structure. Yes, the free market, this bar, which we're talking about, Merck Bar in Phoenix, Arizona, several others have done this around the country as well. 500 in San Francisco are doing it. But they're also giving the caveat of a negative test. If you can prove that you have a negative test within 72 hours, you're yeah. allowed to come in. 
So at least there's a little caveat there. I, I just get very nervous whether it's a free market or not requiring you to do X, Y, or Z before you come in. And don't give me the no shoes, no shirt, no service. That's ridiculous. How many people are showing up, no shoes, no shirt, no service, except in beach towns? Come on now. Right. That's true. Uh, we got a lot of beach here in Arizona, though. Just no ocean. So yeah, kind of, <laughs> we, we are a beach town, to be quite right. honest with you. I, I I agree. I just I think my only problem with this is for those of us that have had COVID, if we have antibodies, why aren't antibody tests included into a passport? Good like question. if we were told that we have antibodies and you're good, you know, you might get again, but it's going to be less. Kind of the same thing as, as having the, the, the shot. Then why can't I go get an antibody test and say, put that on my passport? Let's go. And if there's going to if look, if we can't walk away from it, if, if people haven't challenges legally yet, it's coming. It's going to keep coming. But Merck Bar is going to learn in, in short order. If the if Arizona has an appetite for this, and yes. if they do, God bless them because they rolled the dice and they won, and that's business. Because the cool thing about freedom, especially with small businesses, is that you don't have to be good or smart. You don't. I mean, you if you want to make uh, uh, yarn balls f uh, for puppies, <laughs> if that's what you want to do. Which, by the way, somebody handed my wife at the store for Jaster while she was out walking and she stopped in to get coffee. Someone brought him a yarn, a, basically a ball of yarn for a puppy. I'm like, that's going to last about 45 seconds. Arr. Anyway, pair that up. If that's what you want to do, cool. Y you might succeed. You might not. So right. I like, I, I do like it from that perspective of a small business freedom. Don't disagree. Um, I don't agree with the Merck Bar's decision, but I'm not going to go. So they, they, I, I haven't been. So they didn't lose a customer. I'm just not going to go because I don't want to have to show um, a decision I made with my doctor, whether I did or didn't. And, and, you know, this is a very interesting time because there's so much pressure to get the shot. But we obviously don't know that much about how effective the shot is. That's just reality. Well, however you feel about it. I, Mike and I both hope the vaccine is the solution to this problem. Mm -hmm. But we just don't know if it is yet. We don't know how effective it is yet, but we do know that Israel and France have gone towards a third shot. We do know that there's lots of Americans getting their third shot because they're walking into pharmacies or grocery stores and say, I need a shot. And they're getting a third shot on their own. That's way too experimental for me. I've just altered my behavior a little bit. I yeah. do certain things to try to keep myself safe. I don't hang around a ton of people all the time. I try to limit my size of crowd, if you will, because there are certain things that I'm willing to do right now because I don't want to spread COVID. And I don't think anybody does. There's this conception that unvaccinated people want to get COVID and spread it around. That's obviously ridiculous. Like, who's that insane that they want to get people sick? Not many people. Maybe there's a few out there because there's always some I'm outliers. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I don't, I just don't like this further dividing of America. We're very divided. We're, we're this whole point of the bromance, right? We know we're divided. We can't even talk about anything anymore without resorting to labels and name calling. This is why I want to have this conversation. I just don't like a bar taking part in the further division of Americans saying, you are not welcome here mm -hmm. if you don't do this. I mean, yeah. you know, I always think about Irish not welcome, blacks not welcome, two separate drink drinking fountains. Two drinking fountains, right. Yeah. yeah. And I, I know they're different because especially when it comes to race or your heritage, yeah. that's not a choice. This is a choice. So I understand there's a nuance there but it's the same power structure and principle that excludes people that I don't like. Yeah. And uh, two things I, I, I hope for, if you want to have a beer with me, but you're uncomfortable hanging out with me because I don't have a vaccine. We have this cool program that Rob and I are using right now called StreamYard. I'd love to have a beer with you. I, yeah. I honestly would. I, I, I miss my people. I miss meeting new people. Mm -hmm. And if you want to even have this debate, I would love to have this debate with you because there's no reason we need to be divided. We can have a conversation. And that's what Rob and I do. Have great conversations around beer. And it, it could be, I don't care if you even don't drink, have some tea. We're good with that too. Don't like caffeine's evil. That's fine. Water's great. <laughs> we can, we can have that. And, and here's another wish I have real quick is that um, if it is what we wish and it is the cure for everything and it knocks this entire thing out, I want Rob and I to be the very last two to get it 
So we get to have that big press conference and we'll be like, ah, we'll do it. We'll do it on TV. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that I want to make it all about idea. me. Rob. I want to make it all about me. Nothing wrong with that. Everybody else in America is doing that right now. So True. why not us? Yeah, why not us? That. I love it. That's very good. So going forward, if you want to reach out to us, hit us up on Instagram at the underscore brewmance. Cheers at brewmance.beer is our email address. And of course, on Facebook, you can type in the brewmance. You'll be able to find us as well. But yeah, we would love to have that conversation with you. We've got a couple of minutes left. It's time to review this L. Smith West Coast IPA. Does it live up to the 95 beer advocate score? Mike, you get to go first. 95, it, 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 it doesn't disappoint. I'm going to say that. This is a damn good beer. It really is. This is not an introductory beer. This is mm -hmm. a craft beer drinkers IPA. It really is. And it's very West Coast. I love the West Coast aspect of it. It's super hoppy. Um, it's pretty balanced. My first pull of it was there's some sweetness there that had some good balance. I, I like it a lot. So from a beer drinkers aspect, from a craft beer drinkers aspect, I think, yes, it lives up to it. I would say eight and a half, nine-ish range to me. If you're new into the industry, this is not the... This is not the one for you to try. This is the one that you give the guy that's trying to bring you in to the craft yes. beer world. But I say on my on my end is eight eight five. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good range because I would agree it is bitter, more bitter than you would think. I, what I was comparing it to is Bell's Too Hearted, another national brand. Mm -hmm. That one's from Michigan. That one is balanced as balanced can be. That is a really, really, really solid IPA. I don't think this is the same kind of beer because. I would put this in the bitter IPA category if we're getting super specific. Now, in that category, mm -hmm. really, really good because it does. If you want a nice bitter feel on your tongue, this is going to be a really good beer for you. But I think you're right, Mike. I was thinking about an eight and a half ish for me. So that would mean yeah. for us on Beer Advocate, we're a little bit lower than you guys. We'd be an 85 out of 100, but eight and a half. That is our recommendation to you, that if you go and see this can, if you see it at your, your store, give it a try, especially if you're an IP and you like bitters, you're probably going to like this beer. And if you're going someplace and I don't know what to get, he really, I know he really likes IPAs, uh, he's really into IPAs, this is a good choice. This is a really good choice for the those of us that have done this for a while and have the palate for it and want this kind of stuff, this is a really, really good beer to have. Yes. No question about it. We'll have another good beer, hopefully next week for you, right here on the Brewman's Podcast and on the radio on 550 KFYI. Cheers, everybody.